So what about the waste? First, there's not much of it. Okay, all the commercial waste in the world, ever produced by everyone, would fit in Richland High School Stadium. Now that's just not much. Why, why is there an issue here? We don't have to deal with that little piece of waste. And it produces 20% of our power. Now coal, of course, I mean, that's waste. 400 million tons, that's waste. Two billion tons of CO2 and even you know, the rat, I think it's, this goes up the stat. You know, naturally occurring uranium, thorium, and the daughter products. That's a lot of waste. So you get much more of a hit living next to a coal-fired power plant than you ever could next to a nuclear power plant. And again, you can recycle this. We are not doing it now, but we need to at some point. No rush, no rush, no rush. 2050, 2060, fine. We don't have to recycle now. We need to get our act together, of course, to figure out how to do it, but we, it's no rush to do this. And then, of course, nuclear waste is the easiest waste to handle. That's kind of not intuitive, but um, I've handled them all. We've all, actually, many of us have handled them all, right? Biological, this is nasty stuff. You know, chlorine gas kills people every year, um, but nuclear waste never hurts anyone. And then, of course, there's WIP. So those of you who know WIP, um, that's great. Most of you don't know much about WIP. Um, and if you do, it's probably in a bureaucratic sense. So here's WIP. It's uh, about, about 30 miles east of Carlsbad, New Mexico. Um, it's in a very thick salt deposit. You've probably seen these trucks leaving Hanford. They're great, they're really kind of neat. Um, WIP is in the, the center of the thickest member of the Salado Salt Formation. So the, the, the salt is about 6,000 feet thick, the thick member is about 3,000 feet thick, and this is about a half mile below the surface in there. And we're almost half done, which is what most people don't We're almost half full, okay? We've, we're just about full, this is a little old, we're, we're just filling, like this month, panel four, we've cut panel five, and we're cutting panel six. There's only eight panels, 800,000, uh, 55 gallon drum equivalents of true, true waste, transuranic nuclear waste from weapons production. So this is, you know, again, we're all licensed to accept weapons waste, not commercial waste. Now this was formed by repeated evaporation over 30 million years um, during the Permian of a little arm of the Puerto Pacific that was into uh, 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 east, uh, southeast New Mexico and west Texas. Um, 6,000 feet of salt. Okay, just repeated evaporation. In fact, I have a big chunk here, if anyone wants to look at it. Very nice. Makes great margarita salt. <laughs> Not kidding. It's actually great. <laughs> <laughs> now recently, in fact, if you want to, yeah. If you want to come down to whip, we'll take you down home. It's, it's, it's great. Look at that. Now, if you look close in there, you'll actually see square bubbles. You know, they're crystallographically trapped 230 million year old seawater that was trapped 230 million years ago while the salt was growing. So again, there's square bubbles. Sometimes, in fact, there's one in there. You can see a little, a little uh, air bubble in there, which is Permian atmosphere that's trapped in there. So nothing's happened to the salt since then. What's interesting is that a, a group in Chapman Hill just finally um, isolated DNA. So this is Jurassic Park kind of stuff. Okay, this is, this is um, DNA. We've got up to 12,000 base pairs. Good old halophilic bacteria, the same stuff that's there now. Nothing's happened, nothing likes to live in salt water very much. Um, brine, actually 200,000 parts per million sodium chloride. Um, we have bacterial husks and cell cellulosic, so bacterial wall degradation, so it's, it's there. Nothing, nothing can demonstrate that this unit is isolating. <laughs> you want to put something in there, nothing's going to happen to it, not for 10,000 years, but for 200 million years. This is the show to more than anything else. So the reason it's still around is because there's no naturally occurring radioactive material in the salt. There's no uranium, thorium, there's hardly any that in 40, so there hasn't been any radiological de de degradation. It was never buried deep enough to thermally degrade it, so it never got above the denaturing point of DNA and proteins, which is about 41 degrees C. It never, uh, it, it, it was removed, the, the depositional rate was fast enough that it was removed from cosmic ray interaction quick enough that it also did not degrade. So just the perfect situation, nothing else like this in the world. There's lots of salt in the world, but there's not any salt like this. This is not a dome, no tectonics, no tectonic activity. It's still so horizontal that uh, they used to use a base layer to, to, to mine for horizontality instead of a laser. Now, no, we actually lost that, that, that uh, base layer, so now we use lasers. That is good, but it's okay. So it's very, very stable. Nothing has happened. 
to this unit in 2 million years, and nothing will in the next 2 million. Now the nice thing, Carlsbad, New Mexico was settled by German miners in 1880, mining potash. So we've been mining this stuff a lot. Now the, the potash layer, the potassium chloride layer, is, is right above the, the, the sodium chloride layer. So we've been doing this a long time, off the shelf, continuous mining, cheap, very cheap. Miners are great. When, when DOE came in 1972 to approach Carlsbad and said, listen, we, you know, there's a, there's a one in a billion chance something might happen in 10,000 years. They laughed, because they're miners. I mean, they, people die all the time in mining. You know, it's, it's, it, it's a tough business. Okay, so immediately DOE hired 500 miners, no problem. So it's a great job. They know what they're doing. We've been doing it for years and years. Piece of paper. This is what it looks like if we go down the hole, if you come down and visit us, we'll take you down the hole. This is the plutonium waste, the alpha emitting waste. Just put it in an $80, 55-gallon drum and you're good. Okay, no shielding required, no vitrification, nothing. Just get it on the road, get it to wit. Now the hot stuff we started uh, a few years ago, um, this is essentially recycled spent fuel from, from defense reactors. Okay, so we know how to dispose of recycled spent fuel. It's hot stuff, it has CPU. 137 is not 290. So we talk about that much. It's only about 2% of the waste, but it is the hot stuff. And we started shipping it um, in 2007. So it's a great 32 B cap. Uh, I'm sorry, 72 B cap. Um, there's only three drums in there, unfortunately. It's all done robotically on the shielded can, and then it's plunged into the wall in a pre cut uh, borehole in the wall, and then plugged with a four foot metal wrap cement plug. Very easy, very cheap, no problems. We know how to do it. So you can do this with fed fuel if you want, or recycled fed fuel, or whatever waste you, you have. It, it really is easy. I want to back up a little bit because the interesting thing about the salt, one of the properties that makes it so ideal for isolation, isolation is that it creeps close. It has a creep closure property. The, the rheology is such that it cannot sustain a fracture or a pore space at all. So very quickly it closes and becomes very, very tight. So again, the, the, it's about 150 bar pressure at this depth, 2,000 pounds a square inch, and it pretty much just creeps in. Now the, the, the old miners, the old potash miners, figured out how to cut a hole to determine the rate at which it closes. So if you want something to stay open 100 years, you cut it into a cylinder. Because the stress is evenly distributed about the, the edge, it'll stay open 100 years. So the shafts are cylinders, of course. So they'll stay open as long as you want. Um, if you want to make your construction drifts, where, where you drive your little trucks and everything else, you make those squares because they will stay open 50 years, the life of the WIP project. But if you want a waste room to close quickly in 10 years, you cut it into a long rectangle. So the waste room, the long rectangles, they will pre-close in about 10 years.